on. Hi. All right. My name is Tirza. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a jumping puzzle that I worked on late last year. Um, forgive me, this is my first live stream ever, so I'm a little nervous, but um, let's get started. Anyway, here I am. I am here in Mount Maelstrom, and if you haven't been here, it's up here in this corner, although you have to get here in a kind of special way. Um, if there's these four kind of portal caretakers around the world that hold um, the entryway to this jump puzzle, and like there's, there's a fire guy up in here, and I know there's one guy there. I don't know where the other two are off the top of my head, but I'm um, sure you can look on that. Um, and anyway, we were tasked to, um, on the team I was on, uh, just build some new areas that were, uh, that we just add into the shift game. And so this was one of the things I worked on with my team. On this one, I worked with Ben Kirsch, the designer, and um, Nate Bearwald, uh, prop designer, uh, prop artist, and he helped me make this area awesome, as well as my whole environment art team making cool props and everything for me. And uh, the basic gist of this one, I wanted to kind of make a unique area that uh, aesthetically wasn't really anywhere else. And so I kind of had some fun with it, um, playing around with some ex existing assets. Um, and for this one, you basically you talk to this lady here once you're portaled in. And uh, she, she basically tells you that there's a treasure chest over here. But in order to open it, you have to find four keys. And the four keys are elemental based. And so there's fire, earth, water, and air. So if you look around, you can kind of see some little area things up there. So that you need to make your way up there to get that like, essence of air. I can't tell you there. I can't remember what it's called. But we're going to go get the water one first, which is down in here. Now, I didn't actually build all this myself. Uh, a lot of the prop artists helped me. Um, help me immensely. They basically make all the individual pieces for me and so I can then plug them all together uh, almost like Lego pieces and put them all together and then I light everything and make a fun play space. I'm sorry if you're having trouble hearing me. We are having some um, mic technical difficulties. I'll try to speak up a little bit more. For this specific puzzle, I wanted to make um, different different difficulties of them. And not all four of the pieces are made or are found by doing a jump puzzle. Like one of them, you just have to find them. This one's probably the easiest path. Checking up this water area. And if you guys have any questions about how I made this or um, anything art related, I'll gladly answer it. so you can see them better. I didn't lay out the jumping puzzle on paper first. I, uh, for this one, I kind of built a, you know, I'm gonna run past that veteran just real quick and gather this canto here. Ooh. In all my areas, when you get high up, I like to be able to have shortcuts back. Now for this one, I just um, I actually just built this kind of tree thing first because I thought it was cool looking and I wanted to climb. And then I just built the areas around it. It was kind of it was a little more iterative and evolving and less planned and more organic, which worked well for the more organic type of environment that it is. Like this one, you don't need a jumping. But you do have to find it here at the root of this tree. Retreat! 
It's funny is um in all the environments that I make I uh, I'm usually listening to music or uh, doing uh, or uh, listening to an audiobook or something and for this specific one I was listening to the Mistborn series I don't know if you guys have uh, read that at all and so whenever I run through here I just think about that book Puzzle to art took me probably about, mm, I would say, like two weeks. Yeah, and, uh, it wasn't too difficult because jumping puzzles usually take um, a little bit less time if we don't have a whole lot of content to be hooked up. Like this one has some spawns and little things at the time, so it was a relatively simple and very difficult. Ashley, nice to meet you too. Got that cool back piece. This is where it starts to get a little difficult. So thankfully there's people here if I fall and die, I might need you to come rescue me. I'm nervous and I'm worried that I'm gonna like dodge roll off a cliff or something. So we're starting to climb this uh, large cliff face and we'll get pretty high up to get this uh, essence up here. And I made um, an environment zone up here that made it extra windy with like the clouds kind of popping through. It's really silly. I love this grass too, how it reacts to the wind. Little touches like that and as an environment artist though. skip these guys and then run off the cliff. Hopefully we can do it without knowing. Not very nice. Last one, which is the hardest, and he's at the very top of the tree. This is pretty fun. I've never done a live stream before. The tree is very difficult. I'm not looking forward to those mushroom platforms. Why did I build that? I can't complain, I built it myself. Very helpful. Just 
Okay. So now is there any more we have this tree? This is definitely the most difficult path here. I've been kind of doing the uh, difficulty ramp ramping up here. And you know, all these little platforms and things like that, none of them are ever planned. <laughs> we usually just say, I need to get up this tree. And so we start grabbing props and sticking it into like other rocks and see if it works. It's very organic how we work. Yeah, it was me. Oh, this is the part that's scary because I can only jump on these things. hard for me to figure out what to do for this area because it was really kind of a plant-based area. It's like putting fire in the grove. I mean, everything would catch on fire. It's not very cool. So I decided to go with sun and energy. <clears throat> it works better with uh, all the other elements. It's like put some light rays of glowiness. Kind of sell that fact. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with chat. I got this armor from Warby World actually with that new the new um, badge stuff that you can turn in for skins. Oh, it's got a great helmet too. Oh, that's really quick. Oh, that's so cool. Alright. So any more questions on the jumping puzzle itself? This is the best part too. Let's be able to do this. Let's go get our treasure. I don't usually set aim for difficulty on the jumping puzzle. Sometimes, sometimes it, we just build it and it turns out too easy, to be too hard, and then we modify it from there. And I'm gonna go open the treasure chest now that I've gotten all four of the pieces. Oh, someone asked what my position is. I'm an environment artist. Some other things my team added at the same time was um. Cuddler's Cove, which is the, the baby quagga and jumping puzzle. Um, Vex's Lab, which I worked with uh, Devin Carver on, I think is awesome. And a couple other small things. And this jumping puzzle is at Mount Maelstrom. I'll show it again here. But you have to find these creatures that have uh, little events. And when you kill them, they open a portal that will teleport you to. Here do steps. <laughs> yeah, that quag and baby or uh, baby quag and jumping puzzle. Kind of brutal. Oh yeah. Hey, don't make fun of my map completion. Environmentalist, environment artist. It's different. <laughs> yes, I did get lots of cheeseburgers, especially mailed in game, so thank you. If there's any more questions on this jumping puzzle in particular? Uh, that's what we were hoping for. We didn't really um, broadcast it much that it was put in, and so people kind of are just going to run across it and uh, surprises them, which is fun. We're always making jump puzzles, so you can expect that it, that it will be fun. I don't know how many other models there were. 
like I'll make some things. I make a lot of I like to make plants and um, some various things. Uh, a lot of textures, I like doing textures as well. But most of these props weren't made by me specifically. Favorite environment to work with? That's difficult. I think I just like um, I like working in a variety of different environments. Um, I think that uh, the more organic stuff is easier for me, uh, like like plants and rocks and, and water and things like that. That comes more naturally to me. But I, I enjoy working on all. I'm the wind. I know the hippos are moving. This is so oily. I usually create it digitally, um, just directly. Um, the program that we use is really cool because you can just grab props and plop it down and move terrain around. And so I almost make things look like on paper, but I make it in 3D, just roughly putting things together, and, um, getting the kind of gray boxed version of it roughed out, and then um, then go from there and iterate. figure out how far to put the jumping platforms. Well, I would like to say that I'm perfect and I know just by placing them um, how far they're going to be, but I usually it takes a lot of trial and error. I'll put a bunch down and then I'll test and then do the jumping puzzle myself. Uh, a lot of the environment artists are pretty good at jumping puzzles because we actually have to sit there and test them ourselves the whole time, so we got pretty good at them. Interesting idea, class theme jumping puzzles. Oh, I'll have to bring that up. Mm. The camera is something that we have to be aware of. Um, like right here, it'll kind of pop in if you get close to stuff. So we, we just have to make sure to try and um, alleviate that as, as much as possible when making that. Oh, no, Allie. Are you stuck? Thank you, Funky. My Sura has the same hairstyle as I do. <laughs> Any areas I want to improve in this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's always stuff I can add. It's the unfortunate thing. I can't, can't think of any specific instances at smaller though. But I do like this aesthetic a lot. I would like to use it more somewhere else. Last time I will show, um, oh, one second, Allie's asking me what other puzzles I've done. Let's see, the very first jumping puzzle I did was the one snow line, or, um, 
way if you're a book field, sorry. Um, so the, the North Star in Meredith. Some other ones I've done. You have Cuddler's Cove. Mm. <laughs> trying to think of the actual names of these things. Actually, I'm going to start wrapping up this now so people keep asking where it's at. So the last time it's in Mount Maelstrom and you can get in here by defeating portal keepers in this area or this area and there's two other areas that I, I can't remember where they are but you can at least check there. I usually go to this waypoint and run up here and find Lava Dude. Go kill him. And um, I guess thank you for joining me today and seeing the jumping puzzle and putting up with my nervousness. Uh, Make sure you join us on Monday at New Pacific Time. We'll be doing another Guild Wars 2 developer live stream on the awesome Dragon Bash preview. So follow our channel and thank you for coming.